back with some tips for your speaking exam ECCE part 1. So once again let's go over the facts of what you're going to be doing first of all in this part of the exam. So they're going to be asking you personal questions for three to four minutes. Now as I mentioned in the other video they could be on a variety of topics so you have to practice talking about all these different topics. Some examples here, hobbies, future plans, sports, travel, technology, there are so many of them. They're all in your books and you just need to practice giving uh, long answers to these questions. And the interesting thing is this part of the test is not graded. Sorry, what? What? That's right. Apparently, they don't actually give you marks for this part of the test. This is actually aimed as a kind of warm-up to get you going. However, they do say this, but I think even though you may not be graded, you still obviously make an impression on the examiner. And as we all know in life, first impressions are very important. So even though, strictly speaking, you are not graded on this part of the test, I still think it is an essential part of the test. You need to get off to a good start. Um, it, it makes you confident, it makes a good impression on the examiner, and I am sure that if you do well in this part of the test, your marks will be higher. So, let's have a look at the tips then, shall we? Alright. First of all, expand your answers. Now, lots of people don't do this. And, you know, you've all practiced, as I said, you have to practice these questions. So we've all done many, many questions about sports and about technology and everything like that. But what you've really got to do, and this is an art form, is expand them. Okay, the examiner wants to hear your English. So, for example, he could ask you, what sports do you play? And you could turn around and say, basketball and football. Yeah, you've answered the question, but that's a terrible answer, because you haven't actually put it in a sentence or used anything else. You see, you have to say, well, I actually play two sports. First of all, I play football, and also I play tennis. And you could keep on going if you wanted, you see? So this is the key to getting, you know, making a better impression. I was going to say getting better marks in this part of the test, but then we all know it's not marked. But it still matters. So expand your answers, for sure. Be enthusiastic as well. You've got to imagine the examiner's been there and he's been examining lots of candidates. The last thing the examiner wants to see is a candidate sitting there going, uh -huh, yeah, uh, uh, I suppose so, uh, yeah. He wants to see a lively, en enthusiastic student who wants to speak English. That will definitely get you better marks. Listen carefully to the questions, and this brings me back to what I was saying earlier. We've done lots of practice, and the danger here is you start answering perhaps another question. Like maybe the day before the exam, you were, asked what are the, you were answering a question, what are the advantages of mobile phones? And the examiner asks you, what are the advantages and disadvantages of answering mobile phones? So if you only talk about the advantages here, you're not going to get very good marks because you've only answered half the question. All right. So listen carefully to these questions. And if you don't um, understand the question or you even you think there's the slightest chance that you misheard it, just ask the examiner, sorry, could you repeat that please? Or could you say that again? There's nothing wrong with that. That's what you do in a language if you don't understand. The worst thing you can do is answer a question that you have not been asked. Because that's not good. Look at the examiner. A lot of people, because they're nervous or because they're stressed, 
you know, or maybe fiddling with, um, you know, uh, a tassel on the jumper or something like this. And again, yeah, the examiner knows that you're stressed, but it's nice when you're speaking to someone to make eye contact with them and, you know, your body language. This is also important. And again, all of these things make a good impression on the examiner and at the end of the day are going to get you far higher marks. Okay, so this is a fantastic part of the exam. I'm sure you're all really, really good at it, and I hope these tips have helped you. Thank you very, very much for watching. Stay tuned for part two. Bye for now.